everyone, welcome back. In this video, we're going to talk about the disorders that arise due to electrolyte imbalances and acid-base changes, including anion gap and saline responsiveness. This is the second video of my electrolyte series. If you want to take a look at the first part, click on the link right here. If you're new here, I'm Ishwari, a final year medical student. I create videos to make medicine easy and also share my med journey. If you're interested in such videos, quizzes, Q&A session with doctors and productivity tips, do subscribe to my channel. You can also find me on Instagram. Like all my other videos, we're going to learn this topic by solving questions. This time, apart from MCQs, we're also going to solve cases where I'll give you the history and labs of a patient and you have to guess the diagnosis. Let's get started. Question number one. Cyanide poisoning is likely to cause which of the following acid-base changes? Option A. Metabolic acidosis. Option B. Metabolic alkalosis. Option C. Respiratory acidosis. Option D. Respiratory alkalosis. The answer to this question is metabolic acidosis. Cyanide has the ability to inhibit complex 4 of the electron transport chain. This inhibits the process of oxidative phosphorylation. Since aerobic respiration is shut down, a lot of lactic acid will accumulate. Increase in lactic acid levels leads to metabolic acidosis. Metabolic alkalosis is seen when there's a loss of hydrogen ions. Respiratory acidosis is seen in hypoventilation as carbon dioxide builds up in the body. Respiratory alkalosis is seen in hyperventilation. Question number two. The anion gap in a patient who is taking acetazolamide is likely to be option A, high, option B, low. The answer to this question is low. This is how I think about anion gap. Metabolic acidosis can be caused by two ways. One, an increase in production of hydrogen ions. And number two, a depletion of bicarbonate ions. The anion gap will be high whenever a new acid is produced. This can be seen in the following conditions. If you look carefully, you'll find out that all of these are acids and can increase the hydrogen ions in our body. On the other hand, the anion gap is normal when acidosis is caused by a decrease in bicarbonate. These are some examples. Acetazolamide inhibits carbonic anhydrase and prevents the absorption of bicarbonate in the kidney. Since the kidneys aren't absorbing bicarbonate, the levels of bicarbs drop in the body resulting in non-anion gap metabolic acidosis. Question number three. A patient with metabolic acidosis is likely to have Option A, high parathyroid hormone Option B, low parathyroid hormone The answer to this question is low parathyroid hormone Parathyroid hormone is secreted by the parathyroid gland to increase the amount of calcium in the serum Albumin is a protein Hydrogen ions and calcium ions compete with each other to bind to albumin when there is metabolic acidosis, there is a lot of hydrogen ions. So, they bind to albumin and many calcium ions are left alone. Since the amount of free calcium is already high, the parathyroid hormone secretion will be low. Question number four. Which of the following kinds of metabolic alkalosis is saline responsive? Option A, diuretic use. Option B, hyperaldosteronism. Option C, Guilman syndrome. The answer to this question is diuretic use. Let's understand what exactly saline responsiveness is. Metabolic alkalosis can either be saline responsive or saline resistant. Usually, if metabolic alkalosis is caused by volume depletion, by giving saline, the issue gets resolved. Examples of this is vomiting, dehydration, and diuretic use. But if metabolic alkalosis is caused by things like hyperaldosteronism and Cushing disease, it won't respond to saline because the volumes in the body is not low. Although Gailman syndrome has an effect similar to diuretics, it isn't saline responsive because the issue is with the kidney. So, even if we provide saline, the kidney will not respond and hence, metabolic alkalosis will not be corrected. 
these come under the category of saline resistant metabolic alkalosis. As promised earlier, this video has something new. I will give you the patient's history and labs and you have to tell me the diagnosis. Case number one is a patient who presents with chest pain which gets better when he leans forward. These are his serum electrolyte values. What is the most likely diagnosis? The answer to this question is uremia. Step number one is to look at the pH. Our patient's pH is below normal, so it's acidosis. Step number two is to look at the bicarbonate values. Bicarbonate values are low, so this means that we have a case of metabolic acidosis. Since it's metabolic acidosis, we need to find out if it's caused primarily due to a loss of bicarbonate ions or due to an increase in hydrogen ions. So, step number three is to look at the anion gap. The formula is the amount of sodium minus the sum of the chloride and bicarbonate ions. If we put in the values and calculate it, the anion gap is 20. This is higher than normal. So, this means that metabolic acidosis in this patient is caused due to a production of a new acid. Our differential will be all of these. Since the BUN is high in our patient, his condition is likely to be uremia. Uremia can cause anion gap metabolic acidosis. Our patient's chest pain, which gets better with leaning forward, is probably due to uremic pericarditis. Our second case is a patient who comes in with refractory hypotension. You find a brewery on auscultating the abdomen. What is the most likely lab findings and acid-base change? Also, what's the most likely diagnosis? You can answer with an increase or decrease for the labs. This patient is likely to have increased aldosterone levels due to renal artery stenosis. The abdominal brewery suggests renal artery stenosis and refractory hypertension further helps us get to this diagnosis. Since aldosterone is high, the pH is likely to be high as well. Aldosterone stimulates the kidney to retain sodium and dump potassium. So, serum potassium levels will be low. A loss of potassium and hydrogen ions leads to alkalosis. So, the bicarbonate ions will be high in the serum. Aldosterone results in the depletion of chloride ions, so the urine chloride levels will be high. Since there's no volume depletion as such, this condition is not saline responsive. So, the acid-base change in this patient is saline-resistant metabolic alkalosis. In this video, we spoke about cyanide toxicity and how it causes metabolic acidosis, anion gap versus non-anion gap metabolic acidosis, the relationship between parathyroid hormone levels and acidosis, and saline responsive versus saline resistant metabolic alkalosis. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. In case you missed my video on congenital adrenal hyperplasia, click here to check it out. If you want to learn more about amenorrhea, do watch this video. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.